Today, I'm going to talk about some uh, new thing we have been working on in the past year, uh, magic angle twisted body of graphene and using the quantum chemistry approach. So this is really, I'm glad to work with uh, the magic team here, which is a joint collaboration with uh, Ruhit Dilip and Huan Chen Jai uh, in, from Garnier Chance Group from Caltech. And here, Fabian Faustich, who is sitting in the audience, uh, Kevin Stubbs, Ray Kim, and Chin Yi Zhu from uh, the math at the Berkeley, and also Tomohiro Soijima uh, from uh, Mike Zalatel's group from physics at UC Berkeley. And this is the paper uh, uh, about this talk. So I'm going to introduce uh, some basics of a twisted biography. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, what do I mean by quantum chemistry methods for this so-called interacting Bistrizer and McDonald model. Talk about some results, and towards most of this uh, has nothing to do with exascale, but uh, towards the end, I'm going to mention uh, some uh, large scale and ab initio aspects. So, uh, what is twisted Balayer graphene and the Moray pattern? You put two layers of graphene and twist a little bit, you will see some coherence pattern. This coherence is totally classical, and uh, you see this uh, larger scale structure on top of this atomic scale structure. And as you, the angle becomes uh, smaller and smaller, this uh, length of this uh, mesoscopic features also becomes larger and larger. Roughly, if you twist it by theta, then the length scale of this mesoscopic feature is going to be 1 over theta. So uh, people know this for a long time. Uh, but then in 2011, Bistrizer and McDonough, <coughs> they proposed a continuum model uh, to investigate the electronic structure of this twisted bilayer graphene. In particular, uh, you see that at some so-called magic angle, theta around 1.5 degree, uh, so there are some flat bands on emerging. So how do you see those are flat bands? You can see that these are some 5 degree, this is 0 0.5 degree, these bands are really just entangled with the others, but this 1.05 degree, and uh, there are some bands that are really almost decoupled from the rest of the bands. If you look at the density of states, you see there's a huge peak around uh, energy equal to zero. So that is the so-called uh, flat band. It's a pretty interesting and uh, it's an interesting observation, so they published that paper. This field really took off in 2018 when uh, 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 Herrero, Herrero's group from uh, MIT observed that experimentally around the magic angle, there are some very unexpected physics coming out of it. Specifically, uh, there is a superconducting phase, and there is this so-called so correlated insulator phase. So this talk has nothing to do with the superconducting part, because uh, still the, we're very much still in the very early days and, uh, uh, of understanding the superconducting part, and all the proposals are pretty much, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, there are all sorts of proposals. People don't know what's a good mechanism. But now, in the past few years, uh, we have gained, uh, the field has gained a lot of understanding of the nature of the correlated insulator phase. So this talk will be mainly about that. What is correlated insulator? You can see that if you look at the conductance, I mean, around these bars, this is one of the original papers on this topic. Uh, so the conductance can plunge to zero. This is not an integer, because uh, you might see this is minus two, but that's mainly due to the unit. So these are really integer distances in terms of the so-called filling, which is to add more and more electrons, and uh, uh, so you count the number of electrons related uh, with respect to the, uh, the system size, and uh, then you have this uh, so-called integer filling point, and these are become insulators. And uh, if you look at the phase diagram, then around this uh, uh, integer filling regime, there is a, uh, uh, there's this insulator phase. And originally, they thought it is like a mod insulating physics. And you can see that the phase diagram is pretty complex. And there are superconducting phase, metallic phase, so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, the experiments was done in 2018. Uh, in 2020, already Bistrizer, McDonald, and also uh, uh, Harilo Herrero, who was behind the experimental uh, results, were awarded the Wolf Prize in physics, which is pretty quick. Uh, so uh, it's a very, uh, uh, very hot field in condensed matter physics, and uh, 
where uh, indeed uh, a lot of people are trying to understand the nature behind the superconducting and the correlated insulator phase. So why correlated insulator? Uh, the BL model is a non-interacting model. As you can think like it is a pretty much like a tie binding type of thing or even simpler than tie binding. Um, it always predicts zero band gap. There's no way the BM model is going to predict uh, insulator phase. Uh, this is because of the symmetry constraints. So the insulating phase must be due to something, uh, due to the electronic interactions. Uh, so correlated in physics, uh, this is something I learned while working uh, in this, uh, 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 on this project. In physics, often means electron, electronic interaction at some level. It particularly beyond tie binding or non-interacting model. It could be hard tree fog. That's also correlated physics. Here, if you come from the quantum chemistry background, which is where I learned most of the electronic structure methods from, and uh, you realize there may be a little bit of confusion in terms of te terminology, because in quantum chemistry, correlated often means post hard tree fog. Okay, so this is just terminology. In this case, hard tree fog could mean correlated. So one of the early questions from this field, uh, early means really about 2020, uh, like uh, can Hartree Fock describe the correlated insulator phase? And if so, um, to which extent it can describe and uh, what kind of phase that really is? Uh, you might ask, can DFT uh, predict uh, this uh, correlated insulator phase? That's a very valid question, but the answer is actually pretty complicated. So we'll postpone this to the very end of the talk. Uh, there has been debate about the nature of the correlated insulator from the very beginning. Remember, the experiments was done in 2018. Right off the bat, in 2018, in this PRX paper, they proposed the possible routes through uh, to explain this uh, insulator phase in terms of a multi-insulator. And they think that uh, there could be some symmetry breaking that leads to a multi-insulator phase. Uh, I think in the past few years, this... Uh, mod interpretation has been quite generalized uh, by the field. Uh, for example, in this PRX in 2020 uh, from uh, Zalatel, Vishwan, and Vishwanath, Vishwanath's group, uh, they say that uh, TBG is more closely related to a quantum anom anomalous hole ferromagnetism, which I'm going to explain later. Uh, and uh, the symmetry breaking is driven by the combination of band topology and Coulomb exchange than the mountain in insulating physics of Harvard model. I think most of the people uh, in this field right now don't think, even if this mod is not the mod Harvard, Harvard type. So uh, there could be some debates, and, uh, but the common goals of these calculations are, one, your theory must predict the opening of a band gap with some mechanism of the integer fitting. Two, uh, it should be able to detect features of spontaneous symmetry breaking. This is because the Hamiltonian you constructed indeed satisfies all the relevant symmetry, and if it does satisfy the symmetry, it couldn't break the gap, so it should be spontaneous symmetry breaking. Hamiltonian doesn't break the symmetry, but the density matrix breaks the symmetry. Okay? Uh, so from 2018 to 2020, there are tons of uh, tie binding level methods. Uh, trying to write down phenomenological models, predicting these phases. Uh, that one, as we discussed before, unless you uh, boat your symmetry breaking into the Hamiltonian, has no hope of predicting uh, correlated insulator physics. Uh, but they do provide a lot of things, like the origin of the flat bands, uh, geometry relaxa effect of geometry relaxation, look at the band topology, one year functions, phenomenological phase diagrams, so on and so forth. From 2020, the field sort of seems to converge to the interacting models. Uh, this is a very impartial list of the models that have been, uh, people have been working on. But roughly speaking, the literature converged to some sort of a so-called extended Harvard model or the so-called interacting Bistrizer McDonald model. So uh, this work, uh, we focus on a much simplified model. So the TBG has, uh, uh, has uh, two spins two valleys, and uh, two bands. Uh, so because there are two flat bands per K. Uh, we focus on the simplified uh, so-called spinless valleyless model because later we're going to do some correlated calculations. So one that starts with the minimal model. Uh, but this uh, spinless valleyless, or more physically, spin polarized, valley polarized model, 
corresponding to filling about uh, one quarter, uh, already exhib exhibits some features not captured by single particle physics. In particular, it would allow you to predict this quantum anomalous whole phase. Uh, so uh, we performed the quantum chemistry uh, methods, uh, which is uh, Hartree Fock, but also beyond Hartree Fock, such as couple cluster and the quantum chemistry version of DMRG, pioneered by Stephen White and Karn and Chen. Uh, so these methods are uh, something in between the uh, the Hartree Fock on one, on one end and the exact analyzation on the other end allows you to really to uh, uh, probe the post Hartree Fock effects, but also they are more scalable than exact diamondization. We look at the integer and the non integer fittings. Most of the uh, work done in this field so far about integer fitting are one of the few groups who can do non integer fittings. Uh, we propose some gauge invariant order parameter. For symmetry breaking, I would think that would uh, facilitate, uh, it facilitates a lot for our study, but also for future studies. Uh, I would also like to highlight some uh, numerical issue uh, that is often not so much emphasized in this community, which is model discrepancy. In particular, this is in the end some sort of a quantum embedding model, uh, and uh, the modeling aspects is uh, very much non negligible and is worth keeping in mind. So let me now introduce the model. Uh, so the full story is actually pretty long, and most of the I know most of the audience doesn't work on this field, so I don't want to get into the uh, a lot of the details. How to start with a single layer graphene? How do you do the twist? Get the BM model? So I skip mo hide most of the, those things under the rug and try to get to the interacting model as soon as possible. Roughly speaking, you start from a monolayer graphene. And uh, it has two Dirac points, and this is one valley. Uh, once you twist, these two valleys will separate. Uh, one becomes a K plus, and it becomes a K minus. Because of the Brillouin zone folding, this large Brillouin zone in the reciprocal space is folded into a much smaller Brillouin zone called the mini Brillouin zone. The position of the mini Brillouin zone actually doesn't matter. It's a little bit arbitrary. But you can shift them around this K, because that's the relevant part you need to look at. Then, to construct this BM model, you blow up this uh, thing around the mini burning zone into th something that is much larger. Then you do the regular monk horse pack type of uh, discretization, which samples the Mori burning zone. Uh, that gives you the K point, but also the, there are some Mori so-called G points. The G points are, uh, uh, which is the reciprocal lattice vector, form you, uh, uh, give you this uh, kind of uh, 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 like they call the shell, but the shell are really nothing but the plane wave expansion like you do in a DFT calculation. Uh, the only difference is the G vector is much smaller, like a, only like a length is like this. And this is roughly the size of uh, the, the, the more rebuilding zone. As you can see, K plus belongs to here, K minus belongs to here. You have some vectors and form a lattice, uh, it's a triangular lattice. So this is really very, very uh, a super quick way of uh, telling you the scale of things and where we're looking at in the reciprocal space. We focus on the k-valley, means that we only look around here. If you also wonder about the physics of k-prime uh, k valley, then you need to include a, a, a contribution from this part as well. Uh, so the, for each of these g points, you can assign a creation operator C dagger K uh, with the three internal indices. Uh, G is the plane wave index. Sigma is the sub lattice index because uh, you start from a honeycomb lattice where it has, which has A and B size. So that's uh, like the sigma. Layer is L, that is the top and the bottom. Okay? So uh, this is the setup of the primitive basis. Then you diagonalize a so called BM Hamiltonian, obtain the flat bands I mentioned before. And then you do a rotation of the primitive basis and uh, uh, get this so-called F dagger NK, which is a linear combination of this creation of the plane wave basis using the flat band wave functions. Here, N just goes plus minus one, indicating the two flat bands per K. It's a very quick, but uh, I just want to pause here for a second in case there are urgent questions uh, that you would like to understand. I probably won't go to the details of it, but the high level, whether you have some questions. Yeah. 
Yes. So the U in there is that your periodic part of the block function? Yes. Yeah, for now, and pretty much for this talk, you can think like uh, they have constructed some non-interactive model to diagonalize it and rotate it. So that's uh, what this does. Okay? So uh, from these uh, uh, models, you can construct the so-called interacting base reserve McDonald model. It's a model, okay? So which means that the interaction uh, is really added afterwards so that you can get spontaneous symmetry breaking and other phenomena. So it has two parts. One is the quadratic part. <clears throat> this is the Euro non-interacting part. But how to uh, 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 like construct this HK actually deserves some discussion. And then you have the HI, which is the interacting part. That is pretty much you project a, a Coulomb interaction to the flat bands that you have constructed. Then you have this FIJKL type of terms, but now you have, they have to be K resolved. K is the Mori K. They have a MK, a M prime, K prime, N prime, K triple prime, and K double prime. And then these uh, four Ks are related to each other with the Euro crystal momentum conservation. You project to these uh, two flat bands per K, uh, and uh, uh, you use the so called screen Coulomb interaction. Properly remove the double counting, that's really a modeling part. And then uh, the correlated insulating phase in this particular model is at, at half fitting because you only have two flat bands per K. The only interesting non integer, integer fitting is uh, one or half fitting. So uh, then you can see that this is, these are the two flat bands. It doesn't open the gap at the BM level and they are separate from the remote bands. In principle, this is it, but the devil is in the details. Uh, so the quadratic part, H0, contains the following contribution. Uh, it has the near flat band energies of the BM model. Uh, you need to do a subtraction uh, due to the double counting of the Coulomb interaction within the flat bands. Uh, this is very much related to a lot of the thinking in the quantum embedding community, but I would say that for this particular community, it's a really at this very early stage, they're trying to get a qualitative feature, a lot of them, so there's a, a huge room for improvement. Uh, this subtraction thing is also source, one source for model discrepancies. Give you an example that uh, if you look at the Hartree-Fock and the couple cluster calculations, uh, so there are two types of, uh, you see this, uh, uh, there should be four curves, but uh, separated into two groups. This corresponds to like uh, two different double counting schemes. And the one's called average, led by uh, some gr uh, group such as uh, Andre Bernovic from Princeton, uh, also decoupled scheme, which is uh, uh, championed by Max Zalatel, McDonald, and other groups. So different groups have their different choices, but you can see that the discrepancy is non negligible. So really, you need to work with uh, these models and try to see what kind of features are indeed robust to these models, and uh, eventually you want to ask uh, what should be the right model. Um, On the right, if you look, yeah. On the figure, it's not very visible where the HF AVG curve stands. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the, it's the thing they separate into two groups is more important. And this is one model, this is another model. Similarly, if you look at this quantum anomalous whole phase, which requires you to detect the C2ZT symmetry breaking, I'm going to talk about it later. And this is one model which sharply has, a phase, has this sharp phase transition, the other look like this, which is much, much softer. So this is uh, uh, just to, to show that indeed there is the model discrepancy one needs to keep in mind. The interaction term, uh, you, do, you don't project it to the bare Coulomb interaction uh, for many reasons I won't go into. Uh, they actually project it to the so-called screened double gate potential, uh, which uh, one of the most important features is that there is a hyperbolic tangent part that kills the long range interaction makes the finite size effect a lot more manageable. Uh, the two electron repulsion integral the ERI is really written by projecting your flat bands to this uh, Coulomb interaction written in the Fourier space. Here this lambda k q plus g, uh, it may look a little bit weird, depends on which community you come from. I learned that in this community they call the form factor. It's very much related to the density fitting in quantum chemistry. And uh, the form factor is the L2 inner product of the flat bands in the G space. 
it can be also interpreted as a Fourier transform of the pair product in the real space. And uh, uh, then you have this uh, crystal momentum conservation that says if k double prime is k plus q, then k triple prime must be k minus q. So these are the most uh, important aspects of the modeling. Uh, then you can start solving it. Uh, you can solve it with a, a couple cluster. Uh, uh, most of the implementation is based on PiSF, that is developed by Garner Chance Group. And uh, uh, it's uh, based on the couple cluster is based on the cluster expansion of some e to the t, where t is the excitation operator. Commonly, you need to truncate this t. And uh, such as singles and doubles, CCSD is uh, one of the most uh, commonly used methods. We use the quantum chemistry version of the DMRG, which is adapted to quantum chemistry long-range interactions. Uh, as I said, uh, one useful thing we developed uh, is this uh, gauge invariant order parameter, which is based on the unitary representation called the sewing matrix. I never encountered this term elsewhere, though. Maybe in group representation, it's called something else. But this is a sewing matrix uh, for symmetry operations. Uh, some of the background materials can be found in earlier works by Andrew Bernovic. Okay, so a very quick thing about a couple cluster. Uh, I won't be able to get time to talk about DMRG, but uh, I'll quickly say with one slide what is couple cluster. You start from Hartree Fock and called the Psi Zero. Uh, you uh, write down the answers for your many body wave function to be e to the t, uh, small t. This uh, capital T is operator, small t is a parameter, where this capital T, small t is written as a linear combination of this uh, parameter times x mu where x mu is really the excitation operator. Specifically, a mu is a multi-index, uh, goes like i1 to ik, those are the, uh, the occupied states. You kick out k occupied indices, replace them by k virtual indices. So you excite the electrons from the holes and make them to be particles. So these are, the, or you can write down in terms of creation annihilation operator in this form. This is the excitation operator. Excitation operators is the commute. That helps a lot when you derive the equations. The so-called couple, uh, the T mu are so-called couple cluster amplitude. Uh, you can write down the so-called amplitude equations by uh, some sort of a Galerkin proje um, galerkin projection uh, to the uh, to the eigenvalue problem. Uh, so this is uh, uh, you get uh, some nonlinear equations called F mu T. Uh, once you have uh, solved this self-consistently, you get the T, you compute the energy in this form, uh, and uh, uh, then you need to, uh, when you actually implement, you need to truncate. Uh, if you truncate to singles and double excitations, this is the so-called CCST, which is the most widely used one in quantum chemistry. But if you perturbatively uh, add treatment to have the triple excitation, this is called the CCSDT, and this is so-called the gold standard of molecular quantum chemistry. There is, a, in the past few years, uh, led by a number of groups, such as Garnier Chen, Tim Berkelbach, Andrew Grunis, uh, Sokolev, and a few other groups in chemistry, they're uh, very actively pushing this method towards periodic systems, and uh, so whether this will be the gold standard in uh, periodic solid state systems, I mean, that we'll, we'll see in the future. Uh, but for molecular studies, these are very, very well-established methods. Uh, as I said, I don't have time to talk about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the DMRG, so I'll now talk about uh, some uh, 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 thing more related to the results, but also symmetries of this, uh, uh, this system. Because uh, these are models, what people mainly are looking for are the qualitative features and phase diagrams, so on and so forth. Uh, so there are some important parameters. Uh, 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 one of them is called uh, oh, sorry. Uh, one of them is called kappa, uh, which is the ratio between the hopping magnitude, defining the so-called Bistrizer or McDonald sense. Uh, so the, there will be hopping between the two layers, but uh, because of the Moray pattern, some places is like so-called AA stacking, which is pretty much just the two honeycomb lattices uh, like on top of each other. So this is called A stacking. Then there's the A, A B stacking, which is uh, really the two honeycomb lattices that are offset a little bit, and this is called A B. The hopping magnitude should be different. That's uh, like a very well-known physics. Uh, what this community has been doing is to 
take this ratio between the hopping magnitude between AA and AB hopping as a tunable parameter and plot the phase diagrams. Maybe this has some experimental uh, relevances, but to me it's really part of the modeling. One of the most reason, uh, important reason for them to in, uh, uh, include this is there's a special case, kappa equal to zero. This is called the Cairo limit. Uh, in 2019, Wish Van Asselt Group wrote an influential paper called The Origin of the Flat Bands because you can do some pretty intriguing uh, complex analysis and uh, uh, to show that in this limit, uh, the band can be completely flat. And uh, for example, Eric also has uh, works along this line. So uh, the kappa is one of, uh, uh, one of uh, uh, the important parameter. The other is a feeling. Uh, filling is really the ratio between the number of electrons and number of more k points, minus one. So the value of this will be between, uh, this NE will be between zero and the two NK. Zero means no filling, two NK means fully filled. So the value of a new before minus one will be between zero and the two, and uh, subtracting one is, will be between minus one and one. If you go to the full spin for value for model, it will be between minus four and four. But uh, this is a spin and value polarized, so it is between minus one and one. New equal to zero is called the integer filling. New equal to uh, round zero, uh, smaller than 0 0.2 is near integer filling, which is what we focus on in this work. But there's also rather intriguing uh, proposals from the physics community that when you go to around new equal to uh, minus two thirds, the physics will drastically change and go to something that goes more like a fractional quantum whole state. And, uh, but uh, more specifically, they call the fractional churn insulator. That one is very much up for debate, and uh, I don't think the community has converged. But uh, roughly speaking, when you go from the near integer feeling towards the deeper doped regime, the physics can drastically change. So uh, uh, now I talk about symmetries. Uh, thanks to the spin and the value polarized thing, so the symmetry is drastically simplified. If you, we started with a full spin for and value for thing, that was, uh, a lot of things to, 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 uh, to take from the beginning. So uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, symmetry is simplified uh, because there are only a couple of relevant symmetry operations. One is the C2Z. C2Z is really, you have the Z is the perpendicular out of plane axis and you just rotate them. So you rotate Z by 180 degrees. It's pretty uh, easy to see that it will swap the valley degree of freedom as I said, it's a, our model is valueless, so we need to flip it back later. So, so C to Z alone will flip the value, flip the K to minus K, but also it swaps the sublattice. And in terms of a categorization of the symmetry, it's a unitary symmetry. Uh, then there's a C3Z, which is a rotate the, uh, again, rotate uh, with respect to the Z axis by 120 degree. Uh, and that one is also a unitary thing. There's a time reversal. Uh, which swaps the value, you pretty much apply a, conjugate, uh, a complex conjugate that will flip the k and flip the value. With this one is anti-unitary uh, symmetry. Anti-unitary means that uh, if you uh, t, let's say, you apply to c times u, c is a, uh, c is a scalar, it needs to become c star uh, uh, tu. So uh, it's not uh, linear, but anti-linear. Uh, then you compose C to Z and T together. You find that the lattice, sublattice A and B is still swapped. Valley swapped it twice and therefore becomes valley becomes fixed. K you flip twice and uh, therefore K becomes K. So C to Z T is a K local symmetry and also is anti-unitary. This is the, the most important symmetry in this uh, spinless valleyless regime. And uh, specifically, the phase diagram is relatively simple for this model. Uh, so you look at the C2ZT and the C3Z. If both are satisfied, that's the band metal, and which is pretty much predicted by BM. If C2ZT is satisfied, C3Z is not satisfied, this is so-called so pneumatic semi-metal. If C2ZT is broken, C3Z is there, it's called a quantum anomalous hole. And nobody has seen a C2ZT broken, C3Z broken phase yet for this model. Okay, so these are the three things, uh, four, three, two by two, but uh, there are really three things we're talking about. This one is the non-interacting thing, which is not so interesting, so we'll pretty much look at this too. Any question? Yes? 
matter how you twist the angle, you always have a periodic cell. You, you can't get like a quasi crystal. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. But the BM has a hidden on the those things under the rod uh, from pretty early stage. But, but you could, in principle, get quasi crystals. You, you could, yeah. And uh, the quasi crystal aspect, I don't think, has been emphasized a lot in this uh, community. Yeah, so it's just unclear what, what that is. It's not, it's not interesting. I just don't think the model is able to capture that yet. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty typical picture you, you'll find uh, uh, in these uh, studies. And this thing has been reproduced by a number of groups, including our own calculations. We think it's pretty stable. Uh, SU, uh, a pretty robust feature. As you increase this ratio, this is the color limit, is zero, which means uh, pretty unphysical. If you think about it, the, there's no hopping the A, there's a lot of hopping the AB. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the C2ZT symmetry is broken, and, uh, uh, which they say is a quantum anomalous whole phase. But it, you should really take these two words to be yeah, uh, synonymous to each other. QAH literally means C2ZT is broken. And uh, then after a certain point, around 0 0.8, which is roughly around the experimental value, really, uh, then there's the symmetry breaking. This thing plunges to zero, and uh, meanwhile, the C3z starts to be broken and uh, gets into the semi-metal phase. Uh, what people have been doing before is to compute this order parameter, which is the trace of pk with respect to sigma z. But because sigma z is just a 1, 0, 0, minus 1, it, uh, you need to choose a basis. Uh, specifically, you need to choose the so-called churn basis that uh, uh, this uh, band has a churn number, plus minus one. You have to, uh, you have to gauge fixing and uh, define the basis called the churn basis. Uh, so uh, the, uh, you can compute all the other order parameters, uh, but getting to the churn basis, I mean, uh, requires some work. And so you wonder whether you can just work with the original BM basis and uh, figure out this thing. So now let's, let's talk a little bit about symmetry breaking. Uh, so the representation matrix uh, of a, some discrete symmetry, C3z, C2z, so on and so forth, uh, you can always think in this way in condensed matter physics. Uh, that is, you have an alpha, which is some internal index, such as uh, 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 the plane wave index, sublattice, L, so on and so forth. You lump all of them into alpha. And then the symm what symmetry does is to rotate the creation operator into some other creation operators. So uh, it uh, changes k to gk, and also changes alpha to alpha prime. And there will be some linear combination coefficients, dg, and this dg called the representation matrix. So uh, the Sui matrix business is to say, once you transform uh, this uh, primitive basis into some other basis, Right, such as the BM band, how does the representation matrix change? Uh, so there is a some so-called transformation rule. You now you wonder how do you do the G F dagger G inverse rather than C dagger? Uh, so you work this out, and you will find this is so-called the sewing matrix. The sewing matrix is really pretty much you sandwich the representation matrix in terms of your flat bands. But you do need to pay attention to this, uh, where you apply this uh, G to the K, and uh, depends on whether it's unitary or anti-unitary, you, you put the complex conjugate in the right place, so on and so forth. Uh, how do you verify the order parameter? Is uh, 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 like your density matrix is symmetry broken or not? Let's look at, the, for example, one particle density matrix, which is the average of the F dagger F. If the symmetry preserving, then the PK should be invariant before and after the symmetry operation. And you just work through this uh, algebra, you'll find that if the one particle density matrix satisfies the symmetry, then PK needs to be equal to B dagger PB. So like you check some commutator like objects. And therefore, <clears throat> if it is spontaneous symmetry breaking. You can also apply the same thing to the Hamiltonian, find that it preserves the symmetry. If there's a spontaneous symmetry breaking, you can check this commutator like a quantity. If it is not zero, then symmetry breaking. So that is, uh, you can prove this one is gauge invariant. You can work with any basis you want, and they will always end up with the same number, assuming you use a unitary invariant norm. 
So anti-unitary symmetry is a similar. You just uh, need to uh, pay attention to uh, the right place to put the stars, and also when you construct the sewing matrix. You can find more details in our paper. Uh, there are some advantages of the uh, 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 gauge invariant uh, order parameters because uh, you can directly work with uh, BM band bases without the gauge fixing. It's uh, for a topological system, sometimes this gets tricky. Uh, and this is two examples for the C3Z and the C2ZT. Uh, our all the parameters are also fully compatible with what the physicists have been doing, because what they have been doing the gamma z all the parameter is really one off diagonal entry of this commutator thing. So the, if they are broken, they are both broken, and you can easily generalize this to a multi band basis. For example, Bernwig uh, and the collaborators have recently been proposing this heavy fermion models, which. Uh, uh, has uh, this uh, condo-like features, and uh, those are multi-band thing, and this thing can work pretty much off the bat. So, so um, okay. So now let me talk about some results. First is the surprising accuracy of Hartree-Fox solution at the integer fitting. The community, uh, as far as I know, took a while to reach this point because. Uh, uh, several groups have uh, developed a lot of effort to do their own customized implementation of the DMRG, try to go beyond hartree fock and re they realized uh, uh, it's almost the same thing. Now we also have some analytical understanding, uh, also several other groups have as well, analytical understanding why the hartree fock is so good at uh, uh, some integer filling regime for certain models. And uh, uh, these are the numerical results. Uh, the uh, the very top one is the hartree fock and this is the total energy at uh, nu equals to zero. And you can do CCSD, CCSDT, DMRG, and also bond, extra bond dimension extrapolated the DMRG calculations. They're almost on top of each other. Specifically, the hartree fock has a little higher energy as a predicted. And uh, if you look at the correlation energy, which is the difference between the, uh, the total energy and the hartree fock energy, they are uh, all the couple cluster and DMRG are pretty much on top of each other. So you can see that uh, CC, at the CCSD level, you pretty much have captured over 90, definitely more than 95% of the correlation energy. Uh, so, uh, uh, so there's some, uh, as I said, there's some analytical reason. I won't talk about it here. Uh, why the hartree fock could be so good at this uh, uh, limit. But uh, uh, the analytical understanding is specifically at the Cairo model. Uh, and uh, this also shows the ground state is very close to a single oscillated determinant, which means to get coupled with uh, the uh, breaking of the C2ZT, it means the ground state, the nature of the, at least the spinless, valueless model of the interacting uh, base reserve McDonald model is pretty much a quantum hole ferromagn ferromagnetic slated determinant. Oh, oops. Uh, but a very few things are known about non-integer fitting. So we uh, went away to do non-integer fitting calculation. Uh, these calculations are actually pretty tough because they are very hard to converge. One of the most difficult cases I've seen like in converging this hartree fock calculations, there are numerous local minima. Uh, and uh, you can see that this is a, like a hartree fock result. Uh, this is a hartree fock result and CCSD and DMRG. And you can see that the correlation energy uh, becomes larger and larger as uh, the uh, new uh, increases. Uh, uh, and uh, in this case, there is a sizable gap between the CCSD and DMRG calculations. But the quality of the feature of here and also the, uh, the, the uh, order parameters later uh, are very much similar. Uh, for new is uh, bigger than 0 0.2. We used to have a lot of uh, 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 convergence issues, but now we have uh, some better ideas how to handle them, so this will be reported in the future work. Uh, so this is a potentially larger correction between the CCSD and DMRG calculations. So uh, the, later I'm also going to talk about the importance of the initial gas dependence pretty much at all levels of theories, include the DMRG. If you look at the Fermi-Dirac entropy per Mori site, and you can do this from DMRG calculations, you can test more quantitatively whether it is close to a single slated determinant or not. Uh, so what you do is to compute the RDM, you diagonalize, uh, uh, you compute the Fermi-Dirac entropy. If you do the hartree fock calculation, this is probably zero, but for higher level theories, this is not going to be zero. Uh, so 
For new equals zero integer fitting, this is very small, like 0 0.009, so very much close to a single state determinant. When you go to the non-integer fitting, and uh, the uh, Fermi Dirac entropy will increase, but still, compared to the maximal possible value, uh, 0 0.69, this is still very small. So you can say that uh, the near integer fitting regime is still very close to a slated determinant. We know that at some point, this picture must break down, uh, given that physicists predict uh, when nu equals minus 2 thirds, it can possibly be, a, for example, fractional quantum Hall state. So the, uh, some, at some place, there will be a qualitative change that we don't know yet. Uh, if you look at the C2D order parameter, uh, you can look at, the, uh, you find that uh, the, the homolumo gap uh, drastically decreases around 0 0.8, which at least coincides with uh, the uh, fact that the C2ZT order parameter plunges to zero around 0 0.8. And this part is very much due to finite size effect because the, uh, when C2ZT is satisfied, the, symmetry, the system must close the gap, but you don't know a priori where it's gonna close. So the, gap, the fact that it doesn't close the gap is very much a finite size effect. And, uh, 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 but for integer filling regime, uh, the metallic phase and uh, the C2ZT broken phase, they don't coexist, but uh, this will change uh, at the non-integer filling regime. Uh, so uh, we also find that uh, the gauge invariant order parameter is uh, fully consistent with the previous result using the churn band basis with careful diagonalization, uh, uh, gauge fixing. If you look at the phase diagram of the non-integer fitting, the CCSD correlation energy is uh, still relatively small, uh, like uh, it's uh, much smaller around the integer fitting, but it's still relatively small in the non-integer fitting regime. Around the integer fitting, there could be this insulating phase. Other than that, it becomes a metallic phase. And if you believe, and this is, uh, there should be some superconducting thing or the parent state of a superconducting phase, that uh, we don't know how to interpret it at this point. And uh, also, the C2ZT symmetry breaking, there is a still a phase transition uh, uh, like here, but uh, uh, which is if you further increase kappa, uh, uh, W0 over W1, uh, this uh, 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 C2ZT order parameter will plunge to zero. And we expect that what it does is eventually there is a sort of phase transition as nu goes to zero. So uh, unlike the integer fitting case, the C2ZT broken phase can coexist in the metallic region. Here is the model discrepancy I said again. Uh, if you look at uh, the behavior of the correlation energy of the different uh, subtraction schemes, they do look different. Let me say that so far, all the subtraction Hamiltonians take the same form, which is applied the screen hartree fock potential applied to some sort of density matrix, P0. Uh, there are two leading proposals. One is called the average subtraction scheme proposed by Bernwig and collaborators, which is literally take the particle host symmetric uh, phase. The other is decoupled scheme, uh, which is uh, slightly more physical, and uh, you take uh, two decoupled layers of graphene and form a density matrix and do the subtraction. There are some other proposals as well. Uh, the Euro thinking is, is just some minor detail, and they should produce the same qualitative feature, but really that depends on what kind of qualitative feature you look at. If you use an average subtraction scheme, look at the correlation energy, it actually increases as uh, uh, kappa increases. As a matter of fact, in this case, for the average, kappa equals zero. You can literally prove the correlation energy is zero. But for the de uh, decoupled subtraction, it actually decreases. So that's a qualitative difference. And also, uh, for the average subtraction scheme, this is a perfect symmetry breaking. Uh, and then uh, uh, it's a really uh, perfect uh, ferromagnetic whole state. And then you have a, 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 a uh, C to ZT symmetric phase, but uh, the slope is a lot more smeared using the uh, decoupled scheme. So those kind of things are really uh, worth keeping in mind and worth uh, validating and calibrating when using more complicated models. Uh, there are a lot of convergence issues uh, at the non-integer fitting. That's another thing that might be worth keeping in mind when doing more realistic calculations, because in the Integer fitting, uh, those calculations seem to be fairly easy to converge. At non-integer fitting, there is a significant fluctuation if you don't initialize it well. This is even the case if you do DMRG simulations. And uh, really, the DMRG can very heavily depend on your initial guess. 
So this is because if you look at the nature of these states, all of them are pretty much have very low entropy, and you have this plethora of low, en uh, low entropy, low energy states, very, very close to the ground state energies. You kind of have to weed them out in a, in a careful way. So if you look at the C to ZT symmetry breaking, uh, and you again see very large fluctuation, the statistical pattern, they look still very much similar, but if you look at individual points, there is a fair amount of fluctuations. So you kind of have to look at the 2D phase diagram to look at the, uh, get some idea. But fortunately, recently we found there's some uh, thing we don't quite understand, but it works tremendously well, uh, which is uh, if you impose translation symmetry, but that also means that you, don't, you cannot uh, probe this uh, translation symmetry broken phases, but also some uh, physically motivated careful initialization that is uh, related to the, to the quasi-particle spectrum of the system. It's a very simple thing, but uh, it does draw some uh, non-trivial insights from this uh, specific model. Then this thing greatly improves the numerical stability. Uh, like uh, from all this C2ZT and correlation energy, you can see that they pretty much converse. Uh, why, uh, sorry? Yeah, so, so if you didn't have translational symmetry before, what, what kind of boundary conditions did you Oh, so it's a, uh, it's a translation, uh, there is a, there's a supercell, there's a unit cell. So this translation symmetry means that it's a unit cell level translation symmetry. Like uh, when we talk about the Harvard model, there's a striped phase, and it really means globally there's still translation symmetry, but locally you also have a, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is unit cell, Mori unit cell level translation symmetry. And are these states much higher than the ones you get if you... Don't take this additional... Not much higher. There are very plethora of low energy states, extremely close in energy to each other. So this is a really one of the uh, most difficult examples I've seen in terms of a conversion hard to solve. Okay. So, yeah, so we're very glad to see this kind of things. We're trying, this allows us, this recent thing allows us to push towards deeper doped regime, because before it was just impossible. And uh, now we want to look at uh, what happens with the deeper doped regimes. Let me summarize this part of the talk, because I do want to say a little bit about the S key, and, uh, uh, or Abin Show, is for the spinless valueless model, keep in mind that's a simplified model. And then there's no geometry relaxation either, and there could be important geometry relaxation effects. At the integer feeling, the nature of the correlated insulator state is pretty much well documented, and a lot of people have converged uh, their opinions, which is very close to a ferromagnetic slated determinant, which breaks the C2T, which is a QAH phase. At the non-integer feeling, the difference is found. Uh, so, uh, 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 between... Uh, uh, there is some difference between the hartree fock and the post hartree fock methods, and the difference increases as the doping increases. And there is a large number of states one needs to keep in mind. Maybe all of the states are physical to some extent, because if you do find the temperature calculations, pretty much all of them will be Boltzmann weighted. So uh, uh, you have a large number of states near the ground state, which are close to the slated determinant. That is worth keeping in mind. And the C2T symmetry breaking can happen in the metallic phase. And uh, also, the choice of the double counting thing needs to be carefully checked, and it's worth cross-validating a few uh, like uh, subtraction schemes when doing this type of calculations to make sure you're getting roughly the right qualitative feature. Now let me use the, uh, how much time do I have? Oh, I think you can have five, ten minutes. Five, ten minutes, okay, yeah. So let me quickly talk about uh, some very much ongoing thing towards uh, large-scale and ab initio calculations. So uh, w this, what I presented before, is very much like a learning phase uh, of a, for the project. I mean, really want to understand what uh, the physicist in this community has been talking about, what kind of thing they care about, and uh, yeah, then yeah, whether when I'm really, I see myself more from the ab initio side, and uh, what can you do, let's say, with ab initio. So what is clear from the very beginning is if you just do DFT and verify they have flat bands, that's not interesting. And because, uh, as we said, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the, the flat bands with a, with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, like a gap closed thing at the integer filling is really doesn't explain either the superconducting or the correlated insulator phase. So uh, we're thinking going beyond the continuum model 
This is really ongoing work with the Steve Lewis group and Mike Zalatel. The people who are leading this direction so far are Ray Kim uh, from uh, Math at Berkeley and also Wu Chang Kim and Mit Naik from Steve Lewis group from the uh, physics department. And uh, uh, so especially Wu Chang and, uh, and Mit, they have been doing this uh, 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 large scale DFT calculations to get the band structure. Not only DFT calculation, but also DFT calculation with the geometry relaxation. So the supercell is uh, 10 to the 4 atoms uh, and, uh, uh, per Mori K, which is uh, pretty large. Not like, uh, uh, yeah, it depends really on the community talking about. For most of the people, that should be really large. For many experts sitting in this particular audience, that's actually not that large. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so 10 to the 4 atoms per Mori K using, uh, done using Siesta. And uh, the geometry relaxation is done using the sort of twister code, which is a force field, field based geometry relaxation, allows you also to enforce some needed symmetries. And then from this uh, DFT band structures, the plan is to do some quantum embedding like thing, as I talked before, to model, I want to emphasize, model this interacting physics because you cannot do everything ab initio, not at this stage. But there are already very interesting things to find, I mean, by doing these calculations. For example, if you do the unrelaxed calculations, you find there are a lot of interesting features from this, uh, from this plot. First of all, the flat bands are not completely separated from the remote bands. I believe Eric has uh, some uh, analytical understanding of this side, and there's some important symmetry-related understanding. Two, the BM, uh, this is not the BM calculation, these are PPE calculations. PBE doesn't open the gap. So very clear, PBE at least, uh, that doesn't explain any of this correlated insulator physics. And uh, uh, that's two. Uh, this is the case both with or without relaxation, but with relaxation, you can see this is much closer to the experimental measurement that the flat bands are separate from the remote bands. Three is that you see there are one, two, three, four bands. So where does number four come from? Number four come from that, you, as I said, there are two flat bands, but also there are two valleys. So this feature means that the valley has already been hybridized. So there's already inter-valley coherence happening between these uh, like, uh, four flat bands at the DFT level. This is something not yet predicted at the BM model. BM model, you pretty much need to add interaction and then you will have intervalic coherence, but the DFT already has some features. So the, uh, the current understanding is that the DFT results gives you something between the BM and uh, the, the fully interacting models. But, uh, 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 but uh, there, clearly the DFT is uh, capturing, not capturing everything, and there are lots of things that's qualitatively uh, incorrect. So uh, we're very uh, excited to yeah, go from here, the band structure, and uh, repeat the previous exercise and try to see what we can find. So specifically, recently, very recently, like uh, this recent, uh, March, and uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, experimental mystery from Arias Dani's group. Uh, so joined with uh, Mark Zalatel, uh, Andrew Bernvik, and a lot of people. So uh, uh, these are, uh, STM, scanning uh, tun tunneling uh, microscopy type of experiments uh, for a very, very pure uh, twisted barrier graphene. And they study this both of the high string and the low string case. And uh, experimentally, you can energy resolve them or choose not to energy resolve them and look at the electron density or even uh, lo uh, local density of states. And uh, they found that uh, the low string regime uh, the, uh, the order parameter looks similar to what the theorists have been predicting, a so-called uh, time-reversal symmetric intervalic coherent phase, or TIVC phase. So this one is actually very much a mystery, because uh, uh, from earlier uh, uh, theoretical calculations, uh, this TIVC phase is supposed to be energetically unfavorable compared to other intervalic coherent phases. So it's a really, I mean, this... Uh, uh, yeah, this correlated insulator phase, uh, th there are probably at least a four or five or even more uh, candidates, so you kind of have to rule them out. And, uh, but uh, this type of uh, discrepancy, I think, uh, is uh, rather interesting from our perspective, and uh, because one of the possibility is that it is actually due to geometry relaxation, 
And uh, we do want to see whether, for example, with the initial calculation would uh, provide some sort of insight along this line. So let me conclude that the uh, 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 hope I uh, showed that the correlated quantum chemistry methods can be fruitfully applied to study interacting models of magic angle TPG. Uh, uh, immediate things we're trying to do, other than the ab initio, include the deeper of the regimes. Uh, there is also finite temp there are very interesting finite temperature effects, which is uh, led by uh, Zhen Huang, who's uh, sitting in the audience. And, uh, and uh, also excited states, and this uh, we have been talking with uh, uh, people like uh, Zhong Ho Li and uh, David uh, uh, Reichman's group. So there is a, uh, uh, and uh, how to go beyond the continuum model. I hope that uh, this Moray system provides a reason that is compelling enough, we just don't know, we're at the very early stage, that saying routine computation of electron structure of 10,000 atom per K point should be done in this field. I mean, at the beginning, I mean, the first few calculations might be pretty uh, expensive, but if we do more and more, I guess we'll become more and more proficient. And uh, because uh, really, if you look at the, all the details of this, uh, like a BM model, there are really a lot of uh, undesirable features that are too qualitative. In the end, you need to add more and more materials, uh, like uh, insight into this thing. I don't see much, uh, uh, at least for the purpose of validation and uh, verification, we need to routinely do this type of calculations. This is the DFT calculation. But as I said, <clears throat> the nature, uh, at least of the correlated insulating phys physics of uh, TBG, to a very large extent, and surprisingly to many theoretical condensed matter physics, physicists, that it can be captured by the Hartree-Fock level. So we have from preliminary DFT calculations, we have seen that PBE cannot capture those physics. The natural question is if we can do 10,000 atom per K hybrid functional calculation or DF Hartree-Fock calculations, whether that would explain. I think nobody knows. And uh, it's much more expensive, but uh, maybe worth looking at. But uh, we need to keep in mind that these are very highly accurate calculations. You have to resolve all those flat bands really to the MEV accuracy. And uh, yeah, so that's a computational challenge. But uh, I think it's a computational challenge worth attacking. Uh, so, so do you actually do regular Hartree Fock? Because in oh yeah, no, probably hybrid functionals would be better. Yeah, yeah. no, no, but, but the Hartree Fock calculations you have done, they are not really regular Hartree Fock because you had the screened. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, you, some models. And that's a way to actually <laughs> include correlation effects by itself. Uh, sort of, because uh, there is a. Uh, if we can talk about it later, and there are a few components in that V of Q. None of them, uh, uh, yeah, look uh, like too intrinsic to me. There is a one over epsilon, which is screening, but that's mostly due to the boron nitride substrate. There is the hyperbolic tangent part, which is due to the double gate. But we also have done some recent calculations uh, with a much larger gate distance. We didn't see qualitative changes in terms of all the parameter. So yeah, I, I, I don't think those are too interesting. So if you change those, uh, the, the screening there, it doesn't have Nobody knows. Effect. I think this is a wide open. OK. OK. Yes. Uh, let me just uh, maybe very quickly finish, and which is uh, the uh, the maybe with the model order reduction. I mean, uh, together with uh, the the insights from DFT, can we can eventually get to much better, much more predictive continuum models for this uh, TBG. 